and uh, with brother uh, accept questions. Uh, so I work for Red Hat. Uh, I've been writing code for a long time in in, in my career, and I've been doing open source for quite a long time. I'm a runner. Uh, we run every morning at seven in front of the hotel. If you want to join tomorrow, we will still be there. Uh, I'm speaking Spanish and Catalan because I live in Barcelona and I'm getting interested in it. So, um, why suddenly uh, Google and a bunch of people decide to make a new protocol? Uh, because you, you, you you all know that the, the basic stuff that uh, I use to power the internet is HTTP uh, 1.1 for the moment, it used to be 1.0, it used to be uh, uh, 0 0.9. Uh, so uh, the 1.1 is already an old specification. Uh, it was made to, to send a small page and not, not much more. And suddenly uh, happened that like we have huge uh, in a page you have images, uh, JavaScript, and all that stuff on Babel. So uh, the protocol start to be not that adapted. So come with another protocol. Uh, basically, a part of it is binary. Uh, it uses frame, and in this frame you can multiplex uh, various uh, HTTP 1.1 1 .1 <coughs> connection. Uh, it was invented by Google based on Speedy. It requires you to use a TLS. Uh, basically, the browser would uh, be uh, using HTTPS and kind of a strong cipher. That means you can't use a forward proxy. Uh, <coughs> should make the connection a bit safer. Safer. Uh, it has a, a clear code. Uh, text only uh, stuff so that you can use it in reverse proxy. It's additionally quite interesting if you want to develop something because you can see what is what you're sending because if you're using DSL you don't see what you you don't see easily what you're sending. So it's based on two specification uh, and uh, it had been like uh, normalized by the Internet Task Force and um, basically, to select the protocol, uh, it used the uh, uh, application layer protocol negotiation, which is also RFS. So, multiplex, what does it mean? It means that basically, I can, uh, you're going to open a bunch of uh, channels, uh, and in this channel, you're going to send data. Uh, the browser, on, the browser is on one side, and the server is on the other one, so you can uh, request the header and then you will get the response will be a kind of header like uh, it's up to date or things like that. You request make a get and then the server is going to reply it. Uh, the, the code you expect saying it's okay. You can send a header like a get and uh, get uh, the response with some headers and the data. Uh, you can also send data and get header. And the server can also send push you some data in case, for example, if you if in your page you know that you have uh, you are going to have uh, to bring, to need a large uh, quantity of image, uh, and you can send them while the uh, end user is typing something on the page or while the browser is drawing the big frame. <laughs> so. Uh, <coughs> Binary part and the thing, uh, compression, they say like, oh, it's very good. Uh, well, it compressed just the header uh, and it just really compressed the standard header. So it, there's a big game there. Uh, you, can, uh, you can program your stuff to request some priority. Like uh, basically it might be more important to, uh, to get some text so you can prioritize about the text. Uh, you you have a server push, which was I was saying that like basically you can send stuff using the server. So um, in terms of browser, uh, HTTP uh, two was and the TLS correctly, uh, so that it can be used. It can be used. It's I've been in the browser for a long time. Firefox uh, uh, thirty four. If any one of you is still using it, like it's really outdated. 
<coughs> so here, all the browsers support it without any problem. Just a small mention about uh, how you select the protocol uh, in your server. So basically, in the tel in the TLS message, uh, here it's a TLS uh, 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 1.2 uh, message because it's not encrypted, so it's very easy to show. In the other one, I have to decrypt it, so it's just to show how it works. Uh, so basically, uh, the client, which here is, is a Firefox, uh, is going to tell which protocol he is able to do. You have a large list, you can see, uh, like the different variant of the H2 protocol. Uh, it supports PD and it's uh, also do, able to do the FTP 1.1. So the server, in this case it's a Tomcat, uh, is going to reply uh, what he is able to do uh, and that is, is, he says like it's going to be doing H2. So in this case uh, the dialog is going to go on doing H2. So just as a summary, H2 uses TCP IP. Uh, so basically, you have a, uh, the browser is going to open a socket connection to your server. And then all the data is going to go to the socket. And uh, the, the layer of Tomcat is going to demultiplex the stuff so that your application, uh, which is using HTTP 1.1, can work without any changes. Uh, it uses separate crypto, but you need to use compared to HTTP 1.1, the basic requirements are higher, but the browser will definitely uh, do it, and the server will request it. Uh, like basically, in a lot of cases, uh, if you use an old browser and try to connect to a nice website, it won't work because it will require HTTPS and the correct, uh, or good enough, uh, uh, crypto. So, uh, as a summary, uh, if, you, if you want to use HTTP2, uh, you can go for it, it's ready. So, then, why we do another protocol that's super, uh, that's like to be a bit, a bit crazy? Uh, we have one problem. It's a TCP IP. So if you have a bad connection, like you're in a conference and then uh, one packet is lost, uh, or you have a mobile phone and you are somewhere on the boat uh, trying to see that, uh, oh, I'm not going to make it to Bratislava because the boat will not cross uh, uh, under the bridge, you might not get the information. So the idea was to, is to use something else and we have many specification on the on the Ethernet, uh, so you can basically uh, use UDP. In UDP, the good thing is like the channel independ are independent. The bad thing is the protocol itself does not make sure that the packet are arriving, does not warrant it the <laughs> order of the packet. So what's going to happen is like at the application level, you will have to make sure that you do something when a packet is lost, make sure that your protocol, your application protocol is going to repeat it, and you're going to have to keep a bunch of packets because they might have not been received in the correct order. Because with UDP, it, does not, it could be that one of the packets is going to travel one way, and another packet is going to tra travel another way. And it's especially true when you are on the mobile phone, because you're going to move, one is going to go one, then you move a little, it's going to be another one, and then you might have some glitches in all these things. At, at the security level, uh, actually, if you, if you plan to use OpenSSL, you're going to be a bit disappointed if you are a server, uh, because actually the implementation is not completely finished. So you, if you want to use it in the server, uh, you have to use a patched version of OpenSSL, like boring SSL, which is whatever. I don't really like it. And now they they allow you to make a dynamic linked version of it, so it's going to be a bit noisy because in the past you had to, to compile it static, then you put all the stuff in your application, and all the stuff in your application means that you can change easily a dynamic library. You can say, oh, I have a security issue, I'm going to create the LibreSSL library, and then I'm done. Now, it 
you no know code, so it won't work. So now they have a they have a version, DLL version, so that uh, you can basically update it. The problem is like the way they work is like there's a lot of chance that if you are exactly on the same version, changing library will work. If you are not on the same version, you might miss some stuff. The other problem is UDP. Uh, you will think UDP on the cloud? Nah. Mm, no. Usually when you're on the cloud, you don't do UDP. The thing is like, you have DNS everywhere, so at some point, the infrastructure is there. Any question? Okay, so basically, uh, PH3 uh, is using the Quick, it using, uh, it, it using uh, TLS 1.3, it, and it's using UDP. It is used to transport HTTP 1.1 information like HTTP 2. This is why I was explaining the stuff about HTTP 2. The two, pro, the, uh, the, uh, the two stuff are very similar if you read the specs, but not exactly. What happened? A browser need to know that your server is going to be able to do uh, GDP3. So, what you have to do is to make a first connection. <coughs> the browser make a first connection to the server, and the server is going to reply with an alternate service. And if the alternate service is H3, the browser is going to be able to make H3 protocol. Uh, if the browser uses HTTP2 to connect directly, there's also an alt service frame in the H2 protocol. There you can have some bunch of problems, uh, like typically, uh, first time I tried to set up a demo, uh, if the UDP port were closed on my box, and I was at a conference, uh, and trying to make to make my demo running, and that was a bit stupid because I have no connection to my server. Uh, the UDP has been said as being slower than TCP uh, in the in the kernel. I'm not so sure about that. I definitely need more CPU. There's a question mark because I've been giving this talk several times. Uh, it need more CPU because basically at the application level you you have to rebuild uh, what the kernel is doing uh, for TCP IP. You have to rebuild your packet and all the things and keep it in memory and make sure that you're not going to get in time or that thing like that. It has a specification. Uh, the specification has been final for two years, so at some point people want to use it. So this is a kind of quick summary comparing the two protocols. So uh, uh, the transport is different. You have a, on one side you have the, the TCP, which basically is going to make the rest. On the other side you have UDP and Quick. Uh, the streams are handled by Quick. So basically, if you use OpenSSL or LibreSSL, you're going to get a stream uh, in your API, which you're going to be able to use. Uh, there's no clear text in the spec, uh, so we, uh, the streams are independent because they are they can go the way they want. Uh, the compression, of course, they are they are different specs, but not that much. You can do a server push on uh, on both sides. Uh, you can have early data. Uh, that's uh, basically you some SSTSL stuff where basically you can pre acknowledge the same, and you can have the uh, zero run, uh, the zero run time and check. Basically, you have prepared your SSL connection and then you just send the packet with the TSL information and then it goes through. You don't need a dialog to start like, a, hello, I'm the browser, blah, I'm supporting this, and hello, I'm the server, blah, I'm supporting this. And then you agree on the crypto you want to use and all that stuff. So this is, could be prepared with the zero. Uh, uh, run time. Uh, they will turn around and check. So there's several implementations. I'll mention the one uh, I've been playing with. Uh, there's the Kish implementation. Uh, Curl is using it. Uh, that's I tried it. it. It worked. You can connect to the demo server. You can connect to Google. Um, 
Kim, I have a large documentation explaining uh, how it works. It's, it's most of the distribution, it, you have to compile it on your own. That's not too difficult. You get the library, that's a nice with me. Uh, usually use the, so we use the HTTP uh, tree from and uh, or and then you have either to use a, a boring SSL or GNU uh, TSL. I've tried a batched version of OpenSSL. It's a bit old, so you always uh, think like I don't want to do that. You have the GNU TSL. I tested the GNU TSL that was working with for, for testing. Curly, you use it for testing. It's the it's the best uh, Swiss knife uh, for the server. Like you send whatever you want there, and you have it. Uh, the browser, uh, Chrome and Firefox are supporting it since a long time. So, uh, what do we do in Tomcat? Uh, for the moment, we are we are kind of thinking of it because that's there's a UDP socket, which is a kind of not that nice for us. Uh, and remember, uh, UDP, you have one socket and you're going to receive things from everywhere. So, demultiplexing work is going to be kind of tricky. Uh, for HTTPD, uh, we need some more time. Uh, first, we need to have a, an implementation in OpenSSL we can use because I don't think uh, we are planning to use. Uh, LibreSSL or a fork of OpenSSL. Uh, if you really want to try, uh, Traffic Server is a good option. Uh, they have a very good documentation. Uh, this is the URL to the documentation page. I will try and like before the conference. No issue. You know, nice wiki with nice documentation. You you, you set it up. Uh, it's traffic server, so it requires a server on the other side. Uh, on the other side, like a more realistic test than uh, trying the loopback plugin uh, they describe in the uh, in their documentation. You can have also the loopback plugin. It's going to have a page that you create for it, but that's traffic server is supposed to be a caching uh, stuff. So uh, what I do, I uh, like usually when I try it, I will start a Tomcat, put a traffic server, and then try to connect to it. You have to configure it. Uh, traffic server uh, comes with a very nice uh, control uh, uh, tool that allows you to basically type uh, your command. Uh, going to write it in the YAML file. So if you feel brave, you can edit the YAML file yourself, <coughs> which is doable. It's not too complicated, it's just a YAML file. But it's a lot better to have a, to use the tools uh, that are provided because they're going to, to check the syntax you're using. So basically here you can see in the comment like I tell it that I'm, I'm doing a quick, I start a UDP thread. The UDP thread is going to one listening to the socket, making the demultiplexing and sending the request to my backend, which in this case uh, is uh, is a Tomcat. Uh, you have to tell some information about the maximum uh, streams. The value of the increases, so don't. This is to make tests, don't, don't use that in production. Uh, carefully read the traffic server uh, documentation, it's well explained, no risk there. Don't. This is just an example. Uh, then I define where I I define the security stuff. Basically, I have uh, you 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 define like here. Yeah, I tell that all IP uh, are going to be using uh, this uh, this certificate and this key. And in this key, in this case, I have the key in the disencrypted text file uh, because. But anyway, uh, if someone is in my server and is able to read the encrypted key file. Is in the server already, so I'm lost. So better to have it in clear text directly. And I remap all my requests to the Tomcat. Uh, I have a small demo. I will not do the demo. You, if you click on the URL, uh, my server should send you to the Tomcat. Uh, this is the explanation of what happened. Um, 
the browser is going to make a HTTP 1.1 uh, request or HTTP 2. Uh, it's going to receive uh, either an alternate response, either an alternate frame response, which basically take it, take, tell you, use the same, on the, on the same, you have an alternate service to HTTP 1.1, which is H3, it's running on this port, it's going to be here for uh, one minute, uh, and I'm repeated myself, and persist, persist mean that uh, if the network change, I still want this to happen. Uh, doesn't make any sense on the laptop here at the conference, it may make sense if I'm traveling on the boat and I'm stuck on the bridge, like definitely will persist the previous connection that was working. So it will do uh, uh, CP3 yeah, in the, even the network have changed. And so you have the first request which is using HTTP 1.1 and then all the next requests are going to be uh, HTTP 3. So basically that's, that's the page I get uh, uh, with the debug mode. The interesting thing is like the, there were some glitches uh, in my configuration and but because usually what you do is like you have one server and you go in the alternate service is on the same server here i did, I did something a bit complex i use http apache http uh, to make http 1.1 and i use the traffic server to do h3 the idea is like to understand exactly what the process works and that's that's easy. So some of the requests won't go through for some reason. And the funny thing is like to have a Tomcat page that looks okay with with my demo, with my server, it was, it's a bit tricky because as soon as one of the requests is taking a bit too long, uh, the browser itself will switch back uh, to H2 or HTTP 1.1, which is not well explained neither by Chrome, neither by Firefox. So they tell you, well, yeah, we support it, but if in case it goes not exactly how they expect, they will exact, immediately move to the previous protocol. So to test it is like the minimum glitch, uh, if a response is taking a little too much, if something is not found or if something gives an error, it will switch back. So then the, the next request will be mostly using HTTP 1.1. So uh, this is an, another example. So here yeah, I make I make a request, and uh, uh, this is a, this is just a get, and then like here it is get a node modified on on uh, the steel sheet from Tomcat because it, it one it cached it, second uh, the browser knows also caches it. So uh, if you want to play with browser, uh, I have a. There's a nice uh, interop matrix. You can have a look there. Uh, it was uh, it was prom promised by OpenSSL guys that they will have it soon. Uh, it was expecting to have it like for this conference. Unfortunately, that's not yet the case. Um, the uh, the three the three x have uh, the, uh, the the client. Quick API completed, but not the server. So, to have some fun, uh, I wrote a basic client, uh, do a bunch of tests, find a bunch of bugs in OpenSSL, discuss with the developer, uh, uh, be added to the contributor list, uh, and uh, propose a patch, which was a bad idea. Another one asked me to test, and then at the end uh, they fixed the their client, uh, and they wrote a lot nicer example than mine, which you can find uh, now in OpenSSL. You go to the OpenSSL, you have H3, and then you have demos, or you have demos H3. You'll find the example. So basically, the uh, this example is basically to make some kind of test. Uh, it's going to use the uh, so the OpenSSL uh, and the uh, uh, H3 library. Uh, the H3 library is quite easy to use. It uh, you, you just define a big big callback, and once you finish the uncheck, uh, 
which could be fast with the zero LTT stuff, you assigned a H3 connection to the socket. Then you have to map the, the, this quick channel uh, to uh, this H3 connection in order to be able to go on with the protocol. So basically, uh, as, a, as a client, you're going to accept trims on your socket and uh, well, on your SSL socket, and then you get a new stream that you can use easily after. I also play with a basic uh, server. Uh, unfortunately, as it is not finished, I have to use some internal uh, of OpenSSL. Uh, if I have extra time, I can just show it briefly. Uh, unfortunately, my, my demo was ready, but uh, playing with the stuff, it crashed, so I may need a few minutes to start it again. But if I out of time, I will happily show it to anyone later. So actually this demo is using the internal API, the test API uh, from OpenSSL. It has different bad things, like it uses socket, uh, a BIO socket internally. So it's uh, quite, you need to make some, you need to spend some time to be able to use it like uh, through Java if you want, or through uh, your own C uh, API. To call it, but they, at some point you will implement it. I hope, but well, it's in the plan. So, is it ready? If you use traffic server, yes. If you don't use traffic server, it does not look like ready. It is not anymore draft. It has been a draft for a long, long time. Trust me, I've been presenting this with different like, okay, it's draft blah. It's not yet finished. It's going to be fin finished. Uh, in actually it's still in the forked version of OpenSSL, which is not very nice, or boring SSL, which is neither not very nice. The good thing is like basically uh, as as I was explaining, is like you won't have to rewrite your application. Nothing needs to be changed with your application. Because the stuff is speaking HTTP 1.1 internally. That's my last slide, so I have some time for questions. Uh, I guess that's the URL to my email. I don't remember the URL of one of these things. So feel free to, to mail me if you want to know more. Uh, ask the user list uh, what they're doing. Uh, if you want to use something local traffic server, it's ready, they work, they have the wiki, they know it works. the next Go. Speaker, you can take that. Uh, can take this. this is the you have the URL speaker. of the different yeah. uh, okay. Uh, place where you can find information. Uh, you have my small example. Uh, the client is a very crappy one. The server is the only server existing for the woman, so... <laughs> <laughs> I will write a better one for the, the next conference. And hopefully OpenSL will have finished, so we will have it running on HTTP or Docker. We never know. The author of Curl uh, explained the protocol very well, a lot better than me. He has tons of presentation on it. Don't, don't hesitate to look for it. Uh, look for uh, H3 Explained by Daniel. Uh, you have tons of, inf of information. And uh, I have some documentation from the previous conference, which I think I have not yet updated. Uh, and the slides are going to be on that page too. And now I'm open to questions.